So welcome, whether you're joining us on Zoom or on YouTube. It's wonderful that we can gather. And as we gather, let's pray for the one who is, who loves us, is here, choosing us, delighting that we're choosing this time to be with him. Loving God, thank you that you call us to know you. Would you still our hearts and our minds now? As we gather in a different way, may we know that we gather with the one who loves us. We ask, would you change us, grow us, purify us, change us, as we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We can have our next slide, please. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. God said, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. Come to our thanksgiving. Let's pray this together. Let us give thanks to God, the God of all peoples of the earth, for the colour and forms of your creation and our place within it, for our daily food and for those whose work and skill bring your good gifts to us, for the gifts and graces inspired in human minds and hearts, for insight and imagination, for the skills of research which bring healing and fulfilment to the lives of many. For the light and shade of the changing seasons and their variety and dependability. The new life and growth out of barrenness and decay. The new hope and strength in our communities, especially in your church and among all you call to serve you. For all in whose lives we see goodness, kindness, gentleness, patience and humility, and all the fruit of the Spirit. For the life we have been given, and for all those whom you've given us to share it, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. Loving God, as we've given you thanks, we remember too those things that have not pleased you. We take a moment to ask God to show us things he wants us to bring to him, to let go of, to be washed clean from. We confess our sin and the sins of our society in the misuse of God's creation. God, our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer and in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. 
We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. Come to the absolution. So may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come to our time of worship as Fiona and Stephen lead us. Thanks, Sarah. Jesus is the name we honour. We're going to sing three songs now and they're going to flow from one into the next one. Let's start with this wonderful hymn song of praise. Thank you. 
Thank you, Stephen and Fiona. That was lovely. Thank you, Lord, that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Kim is going to bring our readings to us. Kim, you need to unmute yourself, please. Good morning. Uh, we've got two readings this morning. The first one is Isaiah 5 verses 1 to 2, the song of the vineyard. I will sing for the one I love, a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones, and I planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes but it yielded only bad fruit. And the next one is from Philippians verses, uh, 3, 7 to 14, Joy in Believing. But whatever gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and the participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so, somehow, attaining to the resurrection from the dead, not that I only have already obtained all of this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on, towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Christ. Thanks. Thanks very much, Kim. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, open our eyes and our ears and our hearts in a fresh way this morning. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Well, it's harvest this morning, and I'm sure for you, as well as for me, it feels very strange. Strange that we're not all together, in church, no wonderful display of crops, no famous gigantic marrows <clears throat> that we've often had in the past, and fresh produce that we've taken up to the front of the church over many years. In more recent times, it's been tins of fruit and dried foods that we donate to the food bank. It's been strange too that the two readings that Kim brought to us, one from the Old Testament and the other Paul's letter to the Philippians, which in the most part don't mention anything to do with harvest, although there is a mention of the vineyard in the passage in Isaiah. However, as we explore these passages together, I do hope we can see how the theme of harvest runs through both of our readings. It's good that at certain times of the year, we remember important aspects of our faith and understanding. Good Friday, Christmas Day, and here we have harvest, key landmarks that highlight deeper truths in our faith. Harvest, the season when crops are gathered and stored, the timing of harvest is often different in other countries, reflecting their different climates, 
and different crops grown across the world. But always a time of giving, remembering and being thankful wherever we are. A time when we remember God's provision for us, a time of giving and sharing, a time when good things, especially food and produce, are given to the less fortunate. A time, too, to thank God for his wonderful creation and all that he provides. But for this year, although our farmers have carried on as normal, crop production has been good, despite the rain that we've had over the last few days. But over the, the spring and summer, we've had rain and sunshine right across our country. It still has been a very strange time, as we all know. Our shops are now full again, at least for now, but we have to wear face masks. We have to meet socially in groups of no more than six, and many restrictions still remain, trying to contain the virus that's still prevalent across our world. We have lockdowns. Our schools and places of work still have to be very careful and diligent. But in a very strange way, we have seen God's creation through fresh eyes. Certainly at the beginning of the lockdown, there was quietness across our roads. This us all to experience nature in a very unique way. I can remember in the early parts of the lockdown, Rebecca and I were sitting in our garden and it was so quiet, the cars had stopped and you could hear the bird song like never before. Fewer cars, fewer aeroplanes, the air was cleaner and our waterways so much healthier parts of our natural world began to recover. Let us hope when all this is over, we can learn lessons from all of this for the future. A time of giving, yes, whether through food banks or providing food and care for our neighbours and our families, especially for those who have not been able to emerge from their homes or who have lost income and their livelihoods. A real sense of gratitude has been highlighted for special groups of people, as we know. The carers, the health workers. Remember the NHS cheer nights on a Thursday? Those running our public transport services and our shops and many, many others. It's been good to see, if you're a BBC fan, that on their breakfast programme, and on the one show in the evening that wonderful people have been highlighted, giving us a glimpse of their kindnesses, their dedication and their sacrifice. Often volunteers. And of course, we mustn't forget Captain Tom. They've given sacrificially, often with their lives. Fresh focus too has been given to those with mental health needs, those who have lost loved ones through suicide, those from areas of deprivation. Even the royal family and famous footballers have supported and led our thinking on how we need to have a fresh perspective on such groups within our community. And so we turn to our passages that Kim read to us for that ultimate gift. The gift that God provided us for in the shape of his son. That gift was not just given to those who deserved it, those who were looking after and caring for others, those who were serving, but to all of us, all of mankind. And yet, our response has been one of rejection. His people in the Old Testament, the Israelites, 
or those in the New Testament, and of course all of us today in the 21st century, throughout the ages have turned our backs on our God, our Creator, and rejected Him. So as Kim read to us, we hear Isaiah saying of God's own people, I will sing to the one I love. And that's the song about God himself, a song about God's vineyard. And then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. And all through the Old Testament, God tries to bring his people back to him. But so often his love is rejected and they turn to other self-made gods and idols. In the New Testament, a reading that we didn't have this morning tells of a similar story. And if you get the chance, it comes up in Matthew 21. And Jesus tells the well-known parable of the landowner and the tenants. Jesus might well have had the Isaiah story in mind when he told the parable. The landowner sends his servants to collect the fruit from the vineyard. Servant after servant is beaten, stoned and killed. And finally he says, sends his son. He's thrown out of the vineyard and killed. And we read in Matthew that the chief priests and Pharisees knew that Jesus was talking about them and that he too would be rejected and crucified. In Paul's letter to the people of Philippi that we did have read to us this morning, he says, and this is Paul speaking, I was one of those persecuting the church and Christ himself. I'm as guilty as anyone, if not worse. But now, my only goal, he says, my one ambition that I strive for is knowing Jesus as my Lord. Nothing else matters. I want to know Christ, to share Christ with others, and everything else, he says, and in the version that Kim read, was garbage. God in his mercy, sends his ultimate gift, his son. Many of us some years ago went to see Richard Haley's production of Love Beyond. What a wonderful musical that was. And we see and hear quite early on the pain that God suffers as he sees his beloved world, his people, his beloved creation turning away from him. So he sends his son to be part of mankind, to be part of his creation. But at the same time, knowing that he will be rejected and killed. That was the only way to bring his people back into the relationship with himself. Let me play you one of the songs from that musical, which dramatically tells the story of God's love and our rejection of him and the sending of his beloved son. And the song is a duet between God the Father and Jesus the Son. And the song is called... <laughs>
son you must leave my side I wish you didn't have to separate from me part of sacrificial price must be paid you'll be born as an ordinary man on earth and your love for them will So let me just <clears throat> echo a few words from that track that we just heard. For many generations, I've been watching through tears. They struggle through their lives, but never look to me. But the time to reconcile my people with me has finally arrived. But my son, you must leave my side. I wish you didn't have to separate from me but a sacrificial price must be paid. My blood is the only way to save them. And so Paul concludes, I am not perfect, far from it, but I will press on. I will strain towards what is ahead, towards the goal which God has called me. Harvest is about giving. What a wonderful gift we have. Amen. Let's just spend a moment reflecting on that. We come to you, living God, you who have given us everything, all that we enjoy. But above all, you have given us relationship with yourself through the death of your son. Living, loving God. Thank you. Help us to keep on coming to you. Amen. Come to our prayers and Jane's going to lead us now. Thank you, and for such a moving, uh, a moving talk. So as we come to God in prayer this harvest time of thanksgiving, let's close our eyes and bring ourselves into the presence of the Lord. Come to the awareness of your breathing and stay with this awareness. Reflect knowing that the air you are breathing in is charged with the presence of God and stay with this awareness. Think of the air as an immense ocean that surrounds you, an ocean heavily coloured with God's presence and God's being. While you draw the air into your lungs, you are drawing in God. While you breathe in, be conscious of God's spirit filling you, filling your lungs. 
While you breathe out, imagine you are breathing out all your fears. While you breathe in again, imagine you see your whole being becoming radiant and alive through the process of breathing in God's life-giving spirit. Stay with this awareness as we continue to pray. Lord, we lift the church family and our community. May this eternal truth be always on our hearts, that the Lord has breathed this world into being, placed stars in the heaven, designed butterflies' wings, is the God who entrusted his life to the care of his ordinary people, the children of God. Please forgive our moments of ingratitude and spiritual blindness that sometimes prevent us from appreciating the wonder that is this world. The endless cycle of life, death and rebirth. Forgive us for taking without giving or reaping without sowing. Open our eyes to see our lips praise, our hands to share. May our lives blossom as the apple tree in spring. May we become fruitful in thought and deed. And may the seeds of the Lord's love through us become strong and powerful. A mystery so deep, it's impossible to grasp. A mystery so beautiful, it's impossible to ignore. The Spirit of God has made us, and the breath of the Almighty has given us life. Let's pray for the nation and the world. For all whose image of your creation is marred by pain and suffering, in the nations and across the world, we pray your kingdom come and your will be done. For those who wake each morning to shellfire and destruction, we pray your kingdom come, your will be done. For children dispossessed of childhood, for orphans wandering lonely roads to uncertain futures, we pray your kingdom come, your will be done. For each persecuted family carrying your cross, we pray your kingdom come, your will be done. You have given to us a country and a world of beauty, now spoiled by man. A world created to feed us, but we see so many go hungry. A world of riches and people so unwilling to share. A world to care for and people thinking of themselves. Forgive us, gracious Lord. Each time your heart is saddened by a selfishness. Every time we have no thought for others, no cares but our own. Enable us to see this world as a gift from you that can be shared for all those people that live in the world as our neighbours. God of all, we cry out to you for help. Protect us, Lord, and be with us, especially those of us most vulnerable during this coronavirus. Almighty and merciful Father, who show you your love to all your creation, we come before you asking for a quick control of the coronavirus currently ravaging the world. Here are prayers that we lift for those affected by the virus in the nation and various parts of the world. Grant healing to the sick, eternal life to those no longer with us, and consolation to the bereaved families. We pray that an effective medicine to compact the sickness can be speedily found. We pay, pray for the relevant governments and health authorities, that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people, thinking especially about the specific leaders and governments affected at this time. The Spirit of God has made us and the breath of the Almighty has given us life. We pray now for the sick, for those close to our hearts, for Sheila, for Stan, for Doug, for Jenny, and all so many of that we know in our hearts and by name, and those that we don't know by name, Lord, that you know. Lord Jesus Christ, light of this world, Thank you for the hope you have given us. Help us to give our worries to you and above all to trust in your unfailing love. For you have promised us, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Almighty God, our protector, 
Let us trust in you to carry us through this time of uncertainty. Jesus, hear our cries as we mourn those who've left us. Whatever tomorrow may bring, we will praise your name. Loving, ever-living and compassionate God, you understand the pain of loss, the heartache of bereavement. May we hold in our hearts all those whose families or friends have passed away. You are a light that shines in the darkest times. Guide us and heal us in our sickness and in our sorrow. You comfort us in times of fear. May we comfort each other even as we are kept apart. You console and lead us in times of doubt and confusion. May we follow the light of your love and spread hope. You move our hearts to acts of generosity. May we be led to share what we have with those in need. God of life, we thank you for the signs of your light in the midst of our darkness. May we be signs of your compassion in the heart of your world. The Spirit of God has made us, and the breath of the Almighty has given us life. And as we bring our prayers to a close, as we celebrate this season of thanksgiving, we give thanks for the blessings of food, provision and nourishment. Please in us grow a harvest for the world. Come sow a seed of hope within our souls, that we might yield goodness, patience and kindness in abundance. Sow a seed of peace in our lives, Lord, that we might bear the fruits of forgiveness, compassion and righteousness. Come sow a seed of love in our hearts, Lord, that others would reap the blessings of family, friendship and community. May each seed of hope, peace and love grow within us into a harvest that can be feasted on by all. And as our Father taught us, so now we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Jane. We come to our time to share the peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. So, Stephen and Fiona, please Thanks, Sarah. continue. Uh, Thank you. What, you. what you said there as well about the storms. In this great hymn we're going to sing now, in verse 4, of Praise the Lord, it says about the tempests, tempest of warfare, spiritual warfare tempests in our lives as well but biddeth them cease as we turn turneth to the lord and that fury is peace praise to the lord this great great hymn let's sing this hymn together now
Loving God, thank you. Thank you that you love us. That you have called us to know and be known. That you have given us harvest and you have given us your son and relationship with you. Loving God, thank you. And now our blessing. May the blessing of the God who loves you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, hold you close in whatever this week brings. May you know that he holds you, loves you, has chosen you, and may he fill you afresh with his peace. Amen. Thank you to all who've been involved. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you to Stephen and Fiona, to Ian for sharing the word, for Jane for bringing our prayers, for those who've been involved looking after our tech, for Kim for reading. May you know God's blessing. And we come now to um, do come along this afternoon, if you can, to church, beautiful displays. Um, come and bring harvest gifts from two till five. And we shall close um, this in a moment and then um,